Project Muse, Theorizing Feminisms, a reader, review, Diana uh, Bocaferni, muse.edu. Elizabeth Hector and uh, Sally Haslinger have provided a thought-provoking collection both for readers who long have been interested in feminism and for those who are new to feminism. Hector and Haslinger's text is uh, divided into four broader sections. The first section, entitled uh, Background Concepts, offers a selection of readings that uh, serve as an introduction to some of the foundational concepts uh, relevant to feminism, including Iris Young's account of operation, Sally Hanslanger's work on gender, uh, Susan Winder's conception of disability, and uh, Trino Grillo's uh, analysis of anti-essentialism and uh, intersectionality. Also included in this section are readings regarding the role that uh, social determinants play in contributing to knowledge acquisition, such as Linda uh, Kauf's essays, The Problem of Speaking for Others, with some of the conceptual issues framed from the beginning, even students can feel more confident as they go on to walk through some of the substantive debate within feminism. The second section, General Approaches to Sex Operation, offers various solutions to the problem of sex operation, including the sameness approach, the difference approach, and the dominance approach. According to the sameness uh, approach, women and men ought to be treated similarly on account of the similarities between the sexes, an uh, approach defended both by John Stuart Mill and Martha Nussbaum. The difference approach to sex operation focuses on the differences between the sexes. Defenders of such an approach argue that uh, resolving sex operation involves, in part, valuing what is family as opposed to, to valuing only traditionally um, patriarchal values. Carol Tilligan endorses this view in moral orientation and moral development. Finally, according to the dominance approach, uh, the resolution to a sex based operation consists in analyzing and dismantling social structures that maintain the subordinated status of women. Catherine McKinnon presents this position in difference in the dominance of sex discrimination. Coupled with each of these general analyses of resolving sex-based operation are contextual studies. These readings are applications of the various theoretical perspectives on sex-based operation. For example, uh, one application of the sameness approach can be found in Susan uh, Stutter's uh, Social Change on Behalf of uh, Better Red Women, Reforming the Criminal Justice System. Uh, Studer argues that uh, battle-related women are similar to other victims of crime and on this account ought to be treated uh, similarly. Another application of uh, theoretical perspectives on sex operation can be seen in an article by John Stoltenberg, who applies the dominance approach in arguing that uh, the use of women in pornography denies them equal civil rights. Ensuring equality for women then amounts to dismantling the porn uh, pornographic industry. The third section, localizing approaches to sex operation, includes uh, selections from both uh, postmodern feminism and uh, feminist identity politics. Defenders of uh, localizing approaches claim that approaches to sex operation that uh, make no distinctions among women are inadequate. That is, an adequate analysis of sex operation must be one that uh, acknowledges the differences between women, such as race, social cultural determinants, sexual orientation, and so on, as opposed to homogenizing women solely on the basis of gender. Insofar as race, social cultural background, sexual orientation, and other related features are relevant to women's experience of operation. Resolving sex operation pays attention to the very important ways in which women can't be essentialized on the basis of uh, gender alone. Judith Butler's Gender Trouble and Mary uh, Matasudor's on identity politics are two essays that uh, attend to these issues. Finally, the book's uh, fourth section, Feminist Alice, is devoted to looking at the theoretical connections between feminism and post-colonial theory. Leila Gandhi's post-colonialism and feminism, Iris Young's socialist feminism and uh, the limits of dual systems uh, theory, and uh, 
Leslie uh, Fenberg's uh, work our talk uh, among the essays included here. My comments regarding Hector's and Haslinger's thoughtful reader mostly concern uh, pedagogical issues because many students might be taking an introductory course to feminism as a uh, baccalaureate core requirement and uh, not out of interest. It uh, would have been useful for Hector and Haslinger to incorporate the motivation for some of the questions currently guiding the field. Incorporating what might be called the why of the field is helpful from a student's perspective in order to have an idea of why one should care at all about the questions being explored. Often a student's interest is uh, uh, picked and the learning is enhanced if one is informed with respect to why a project undertaking is valuable in the first place. Motivating the field and some of the core issues with which it is concerned also can be beneficial insofar as such an approach can counter skepticism some students may have toward feminism. Having said this, Hector and Haslinger are to be committed for the features, the features of the text uh, that enhance student learning, such as the inclusion of contextual studies. These studies are helpful to students because students offer better understand and appreciate the theories when they are worked out in practice. However, as an introductory reader, it also would have been helpful for Hector and Haslinger to include a more extensive discussion about the relation of the theoretical approaches to sex operation and their applications, included as contextual studies. This would provide students with a guiding framework from which they could analyze both the merits and the shortcomings of a given theoretical view. As it currently stands, the readings in contextual studies seem somewhat disconnected from the theoretical frameworks with which they are coupled. One very useful feature for this reader is its inclusion of study questions at the end of each reading. This feature can be useful to instructors as a springboard for discussion. It also could be helpful to include case studies because they enable instructors to gauge student understanding by having students uh, apply concepts and uh, theories introduced in the reading to concrete uh, examples. Incorporating case studies uh, is uh, something the editors may want to consider as part of a text that is already structured to include applications of theoretical perspectives on gender operation. The feminist reader that Hector and Haslinger have compiled is one that will have brought a few across various disciplines such as the philosophy, uh, women's studies, gender studies, political science, and all other disciplines that take a serious interest in feminism. Indeed, the author recognizes and celebrates the multidisciplinary nature of feminism, not favoring any one approach to the field. This allows academics from across the disciplines to tailor this useful reader to their own methodology and theoretical interest. Moreover, because of its inclusion of localizing approaches to sex operation, uh, this reader will appeal to feminist scholars around the world. In summary, Hector and Haslinger's text is excellent as a primary reader for an introductory course in feminism that it can be used in multiple disciplines and that it uh, complements a variety of methodological approaches to feminism and makes this reader a valuable resource for instructors. Because of its breadth of perspective on gender operation, theorizing feminism uh, is an anthology that is an excellent resource for primary readings in an introductory course in feminism. Project